quick question. We will discuss the Russian left and then we're done. When do we start tracing the ray? Well, what we did so far is we did a cutoff. So we said that there's a maximum number of bounces that I'm going to compute, and the rest of it I'm not interested in. But the problem is that this is a biased solution, and we are missing some energy in the image, because if I would compute many more subsequent bounces, I would accumulate more radiance, so I would get perhaps a brighter, but a more faithful image to reality. And we can do much better than that. What's more, there is a technique that can compute an infinite amount of samples, an infinite amount of depth. And, and that boggles the mind a bit, because what is really happening, if I would need to compute physical reality, I would need to have a maximum depth of infinity. I couldn't even compute one sample per pixel, because I would have to bounce the array indefinitely. But there's a mathematical technique that can give you the results as if you computed an infinite number of bounces. And this is again statistics, and statistics and probability is usually very difficult to wrap one's mind around what is happening. But we can actually solve this problem. So how can we overcome this? What we're looking for is an estimator that converges to the expected value of the integral. OK, that's fine, that's fine. I'm looking for the expected value, but having the expected value or looking for the expected value of something is one thing, but there's not only expected value, there is variance. So I may have multiple estimators, and what I'm looking for is one that has the lowest possible variance. What I can do here is after each step, by step, I mean each bounce, I decide whether I would terminate the path, so I would stop this light path, or I would continue. But if I continue, I multiply the collected radiance with something. And the question is, what should this something be? Now, this I would like to relate to, for instance, Fresnel's law. In Fresnel's law, we could compute what is the probability of reflection, and what is the probability of refraction? I hit a glass window, and with some probability, I will continue my ray through the window, and with some other probability, I will get the ray refracted. Reflected. Now, what I could do is I could run many samples and add them together, or what I could also do is that I don't run many samples, I enter the window and I compute that there's an 80% chance of reflection and 20% for refraction. And I will send out only one ray in each direction, but I would multiply these by the relative probability of the event. So I'm not tracing 10,000 rays, I would, I would send out one, and I would multiply it by 0.8 in one direction and 0.2 in another. And then, if I would do this, yes, I would compute more and more samples. But statistically, this is sound. So what this means is that this converges to the expected value of the integral. And Russian roulette does the exact same thing, but it gives you an infinite number of boxes. So with a given probability, I stop. And with a given probability, I continue. But I will multiply the collected radiance with a factor. And this factor for the Fresnel's example could be the probability of reflection and refraction. What does the algorithm look like? I choose a random variable, let's call it C, on 0, 1. And with a given probability, that's PI, I continue the light path after hitting something. Every bounce, I throw a dice. And if I have this probability, I will continue my light path but I will multiply the collected radiance with something. I won't give you the end results as what you would see in the textbook. I'll try to show you the thought process on, on how someone can put together a technique like this. So I will need to multiply it by something. I don't know what this something should be. We will find out together. And if I don't hit this probability, then I will terminate the light path. So we could imagine this as if I continued the light path 
but I multiply all the subsequent gradients by zero. I spoiled the zero for the second question, so damn it, but you would, you would have found this out in a second anyway. Okay, so I'm looking for the expected value of something. Uh, Li in the head means an estimation, an estimator. And on the right side, this is the actual Li. So whatever happens in the middle is some magic, but the constraint is that the expected value of the estimator should be the same as the original quantity that I'm looking for. There is a probability of continuation, and if I don't hit this probability, then I will stop. The stopping part is trivial. If I stop, then I will multiply this term with zero. So imagine that I continue my life path. I won't because it's wasted time until infinity, but it's multiplied with zero. Now the question is, what is the other question mark? What I know is that on the right side, I would want to get Li. So forget this right term. What do I need to do with this expression on the left in order to get Li on the right side? Raise your hand if you know the answer. Take, I, I, want to, to, I want you to take a few seconds and think about it. What do I need to do to get Li from this expression? The rest is multiplied by zero, so this doesn't matter. Raise your hand if you know. Okay. Maybe, maybe. Okay. Yes, please. May I ask uh, your name first? Oh. Uh, Astrid. Astrid, okay. Uh, I think Li divided by P. Yes. Simple like that. Okay, so I kill the PI because I don't see any PI here. So there's going to be a, a, a fraction, and the denominator is going to be pi. So I killed this guy. But there's no one in there, and I want someone in there, and that someone is the li. So I killed the pi with my fraction, and in the numerator, there's going to be li. So if I do this, then what I am doing is going to be statistically sound. And I'll, I'll try to give you the intuition again. This takes time to wrap your head around. It is almost like in the Fresnel equation that what you could do is you could send out one ray in one direction. So you could send out 800 rays in one direction and sum them up. But what you could do is that I send out only one ray and I multiply it with 800. And no, I would not get the same result, but I would get the same expected value. And over time, the variance around this expected value would shrink if I do this many times. So this is the intuition behind the whole thing. What is a good choice for the PI? Because this has been a parameter so far. What should I put in there? Well, with a little scratch, I could say it doesn't matter. You could put many sensible choices in there, and it would work. But quickly, let's review the cases where it would not work. Well, obviously, there are two very stupid options. If you put pi equals zero, then this would mean that you would never continue your path. You would always stop. So this is obviously incorrect. What if I say pi equals one? Well, this means that I would always continue. I would never stop. Well, you could say mathematically this is sound, but you could never compute one sample per pixel. If you're a mathematician, you would say I have a Turing machine that would never stop doesn't make too much sense if we're looking for a practical solution. Now, anything in between the two is completely fine. The only difference is, because I, I sh I've showed you that the expected value is the same as the actual quantity done that I'm looking for, but the variance is different. So it is oscillating around the very same number, but the magnitude of the oscillation depends on this choice. And what you can prove, but it is actually very easy to visualize that a good choice for the PI would usually be something that would sample brighter paths longer and darker paths I would want to terminate faster. Because this is the same as matching the green function with the, uh, the blue function with the green bars. I would want to reconstruct the brighter regions more faithfully than darker regions because this is what this would do smaller error. So what you can plug in in there is, for instance, the albedo of 
the material. So if you have a really bright white wall, then you would, with a super high probability, you would want to continue your path. But if you have uh, a really, if you encounter a really dark object like the curtains in the other side of the room, you would want to stop with a much larger probability. So this is how Russian roulette works. We will also code this. So in the next lecture, you will see the, the whole thing that we've studied in code.